Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to create this simple glass morphism effect using Inkscape. Let's get into it. So for starters, I'm just going to drag and drop an image from my computer into Inkscape and release. I'll make sure this is set to embed and then just click OK. And with my selector tool active, I'll hold control, zoom out. I'm just gonna click on the image and then click and drag while holding control and shift and drag until it snaps to the page border. I do have snapping turned on over here. So I'll hit the five key to get centered back up. So what we need to do is make this image look like it's being viewed through a glass, a pane of glass. So it's gotta look a little bit fuzzier, a little frosty, a little blurry. So to achieve this effect, I'll hit control D or command D on a Mac and that's just going to create a duplicate. So with the duplicate selected, I'll go to filters, blurs, blur and I'll come over here and check live preview. So an annoying thing about this filter in Inkscape is that the sliders don't move together and there's no option to get them to move together. So what I do is just come over here and manually type 25, hit the tab key until that bottom text is selected and type 25 again. You can go higher if you have a busier background and you need your text to stand out on that background. So something like 50 or even 100. But once you're ready, click apply and then exit out of this window. Next, let's add that frosty texture to this. So for that, I'll go to filters and in Inkscape 1.4, we have the filter gallery. This allows you to just preview what the effects are gonna look like. So on the left side here, click on distort and there's gonna be a few textures in here that I think work well for this purpose. But the one I like the best is called chalk and sponge. So I'm just going to double click on that. And now you're gonna see that it has that little bit of grainy texture here. If you want more texture, you can go to filters, filter editor, and this isn't the most user-friendly way of doing things, but you'll see here it says turbulence. So you can click on that option and then you can drag the size slider up and you'll see that as I do that, it's going to increase the noise. And once you're happy with it, just come over here and exit out of the filter editor. So next we need to make a bitmap copy of this. So I'll click on the image and go to edit, make a bitmap copy. And so if I click and drag this out of the way, you'll see we now have two versions of this. Bitmap copy means this no longer has the vector effects applied to it. So this is basically now just a straight up image. Let me hit control Z to back up just to get that back in place. So if I come over to layers and objects, You'll see on my layer, I have these three images. So the second one was the one we just created a copy of. I'm just going to hide that. You can also delete it if you don't need it. And now I'm just gonna click on the top image, which is gonna be this image three. Next, let's draw the shape that we'll use as the glass. So I'm just gonna go with the rectangle tool and I'm just gonna click and drag to roughly draw this. So I'll come over here to the tool controls bar and I'm just gonna change this to 600, hit the tab key. So that was the width. For the height, we're gonna do 800, hit the enter key. And then RX and RY are the radius values of the corners. So I just went with 100 for each one of these radius values. And that's how we ended up with this rounded rectangle. So next, let's grab the selector tool. And with the rectangle selected, first of all, let's hit Control D. That's going to duplicate it. So we have two rectangles. With the top rectangle selected, I'm just going to shift click on the image. And I do wanna note that before you perform this action, make sure you have the rectangle located where you want it to be located in the final design. In this case, I want it in the perfect center, so it's fine right here. But now I'll right click and go to set clip, and that's going to create a clipping mask using the rounded rectangle. So all parts of that image with the effects on it are now gonna be cut out apart from inside this rectangle area. So let me click on this remaining rectangle and just drag it out of the way. That's what it should look like. And let me just hit Control Z to move that back. Now let's style this remaining rectangle so that it looks like glass. And what I'll do is just hit the G key to grab the gradient tool. And inside the tool controls bar, make sure this is set to linear gradient. And let's go with the gradient in the fill option to start. And then from the top left, click and drag down to the bottom right. So now I'll come over here to where it says fill and just double click on this little rectangle. And that is going to bring up the fill and stroke dialog. So under stops here, which may be collapsed, so you can just expand that. We'll click on the first stop, which you'll see we'll select this stop right here. And we'll change that color to white. And let's just set the opacity of this to 60. Hit the enter key. 
and then come over here to this bottom stop here, which will select that stop, click on the color white, and let's change this to 30, hit the enter key. Before I continue, this tutorial is brought to you by my Inkscape course. You can enroll via the discount link in the description of the video. It's not only a great way to learn the ins and outs of Inkscape and graphic design, but enrolling also helps out the channel. So thank you to everyone who's enrolled so far and to those of you who plan to enroll in the future. So now let's add to this effect by adding a gradient to the stroke. And with the gradient tool still active, I'll come over here and click on create gradient in the stroke. And I'll come over to the top right and then click and drag down to the bottom left and release my mouse. So now we need to come over here and switch the tab to stroke paint. So this is going to be our gradient colors for the stroke. And with this stop selected, I'm just going to change this color to white. And let's go with 40 on the alpha channel and then come up top here. And we're going to also change this color to white. And then we'll set the value of this one to 80 and hit the enter key. So you guys can feel free to play around with the values of your gradients. The busier the background, the more opaque you may need to make your rectangle just to allow your text and any graphics to stand out against that background. So I'm gonna hold control, zoom out a little bit and just grab my text and my button and drag it on over. And let's come over here to layers and objects and just drag this group to the very top. And I'm just gonna shift click to select the rectangle Go over to Align and Distribute. Make sure Last Selected is selected and just center this up. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources, including a link to my Inkscape course in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.